two-man party in an after-hours club. The dark, musty environment hides the fact that one of these men would soon be a killer. Bottles are tossed around and everyone drinks themselves to a stupor. But this is a mafia neighborhood. There is no need to not drink and drive. The less sinister of the two men gets in the passenger seat and the more sinister one gets in the back seat. Soon enough, he pulls out a gun, shoots the man sitting in the front. Both of these men have interesting life stories, but the more sinister man is way more interesting. This man is Sammy the Bull Gravano, underboss of the Gambino family, and a rat in mafia terms. But first, let's see how he came to be a made man. Salvatore Gravano was born in 1945 with two sisters in Bensonhurst section of Brooklyn. This was an Italian-American neighborhood and mainly blue-collar residents. Gravano's parents were both from Sicily, yes, the Sicily, and had a factory of their own that was financed by a dress manufacturer. Unlike other made men, Gravano's family did well, actually well enough to afford a summer cottage on Long Island. So what happened that turned Gravano into a violent man? He was held back in fourth grade. Okay, we're oversimplifying this. He actually had severe dyslexia that went undetected by his teachers for many years. When he was held back in the fourth, he was humiliated in front of his friends and family. Gravano responded with violence and anger. His first fight was with two older boys over his bike and earned him the nickname of The Bull. He set out to find the meaning of his life in very wrong places. And what could be worse than a youth gang? Gravano's life of crime started with a youth gang called the Rampers and immediately got involved in burglaries and stealing cars. Then he did the worst thing a student could possibly do. He hit the principal. But to be fair, the principal had it coming with his derogatory remark about Gravano's parents. He had to switch schools, and surprisingly, the new school wasn't awful. He received complete support from his teachers and graduated. Gravano's first arrest came after he assaulted a police officer who had harassed him. At the age of 18, he was caught trying to get into a lumberyard. He was charged with robbery, but in both cases he was let go with a fine. On one condition, Gravano would join the army if he stayed out of jail. Sending an unstable, violent man in the army? Ace idea. In 1964, he was drafted, and after being promoted to corporal, he was given an honorable discharge. But how did he come to be in the mafia? To be honest, the mafia didn't randomly target him. Many Ramper youth gang members joined the mafia, and despite his father's attempts to not let him, Gravano became one of them, and he drifted into the Cosa Nostra. In 1968, Gravano was approached by an associate of the family in question, the Colombo family. This associate was the future rat, Shorty Sparrow. In the following years, Gravano continued to commit predatory and low-level crimes, including store robberies and loan sharking, but he soon got involved in the management of the after-hours clubs. And that is where the real crime begins. There comes a time when the Cosa Nostra asks of its members the biggest crime, murder. And to some degree, it is a test to see how far they would go for their family. And Gravano was ready to go all the way. In 1970, he was asked for the first time to commit a murder on behalf of Cosa Nostra. The victim was Joe Colucci, member of Shorty Sparrow's crew, who had plotted to kill Sparrow and Gravano after he had heard rumors that Sparrow's own nephew was having an affair with his wife. And he was right. Gravano got back into the confidence of Colucci just long enough to set him up and then shot him from the back seat after a night of drinking. This would be the start of a 20-year killing spree. Sammy the Bull described the surreal feeling he had as the bullets left his gun and entered Colucci's head, like he was talking about a stellar spreadsheet. The killing showed his higher-ups that young Sammy Gravano was a stone-cold killer. Even Carmine the Snake Prosiccio was impressed. It may not seem like it with all the killers we tell you about, but very few men could pull off something like this with no regrets. To Gravano, it was just business. Almost immediately after her husband's death, the widow Carmine Colucci married Sparrow's nephew. A change came in Gravano's life after that. He married a girl named Debbie. While still involved in crime, he opened up a legitimate business, a store for women's clothes and accessories. However, one of his helpers cheated him out of money, and he sold the business. Here's the twist. This helper was Ralph Sparrow, the brother of Shorty Sparrow. To avoid further conflict and murder, Sparrow advised Gravano to switch to the Gambino family 
and join Arello's crew. Then another big change came into his life. His first son was born. The new family moved to Long Island, where Gravano took a job with his brother-in-law's construction business. He told Arello that he just wants to go legitimate, but he would stay with the Gambino family and not cut ties. Surprisingly, Arello gave his okay, but soon thereafter, Gravano's past caught up with him. He heard that he was wanted for a double murder committed in 1969, and that was the end of his short-lived legitimate life.